Hi, I'm Renee Romeo. Today I'll be showing you how to make this beautiful cabbage rose pillow. Um, I have some organza fabric which I use for the petals because organza fabric tends to be a little stiffer than other fabrics that are sheer. So I have two and a half yards of that and it's 54 inches wide in order to accommodate a, a really nice lush look when you're done. Um, I also have a half a yard of a polyester cotton blend uh, in a matching fabric fabric. And then I need some uh, fusible interfacing so that I can make a nice stiff surface to put the organza onto. I also have a roll of string. I have a pair of pinking shears which has a zigzag profile to it when you cut through fabric. I have some matching um, thread and you can either use regular thread or you can use an upholsterer's thread. And then I have a bag of fiber fill and that should be plenty to fill the entire pillow. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is we need to uh, cut out our circle out of our polyester cotton fabric. And the easiest way to do this, you could, you could use a uh, tape measure and, and measure it all the way around and get a nice perfect circle. Um, but I have a charger plate and the charger plate measures 13 inches across. And what that means is that the pillow, when it's finished, will be 12 inches across because you'll have half-inch seams all the way around. So I'll take it and I'll flip it upside down, and I'll go ahead and mark it. So the circle of fabric is cut out, and at this point I need to determine how much length I need of the organza fabric to get those beautiful ruffles nice and full to go around the entire circle of the pillow. So the way that I do that is I take my string and I want to take a measurement off, the, off of the string. So I'll start in the very center of the circle and I'll start making a concentric circle all the way around half inch apart from one another until I reach the outer edge. Once I have that measurement then I can take the string and transfer it over to my organza. Well now that the string is all on top of this piece of round fabric it almost looks like a cabbage rose at this point um, but you'll see I've started in the very center and I've gone around and around and around until I've reached this point where it comes off of the fabric I've taken my sharpie marker and I've put a mark on that string and what that's going to do is when I pull all of this string off it'll give me a length measurement for the organza to be cut so after I measure my string I come up with 224 inches but that isn't the length of the measurement that I need to cut my organza. Uh, ordinarily, a, a pattern like Simplicity might say, well, take that measurement and just double it. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do what I call a couture cut. A couture cut triples that measurement. And if you're looking at this pillow and wondering what sets it apart from something that you might see on a store shelf, it's because I've used a couture cut on all of this ruffling. Um, it really makes it lush and beautiful and, and just really fills it out well. So that's what I'm going to do with this. So in order to get the 672 inches needed for the organza, uh, I'm going to start cutting out the strips and laying them out. Uh, the way that I do that, I, I am not going to simply cut this straight across. And the reason why is because uh, there isn't give in this fabric when you're, you're pulling it in this direction. But if you happen to lay this out on a bias, which means that you take the short end of the fabric and lay it on top of the long end of the fabric, it exposes a 45 degree angle. And the 45 degree angle all of a sudden is very stretchy. And so when you cut fabric on the bias, it lends itself to, to doing ruffling automatically so it's not fighting what you're trying to do with it. So I'll go ahead and start uh, measuring that out and then cu start cutting. The so the 45 degree angle is laid out and everything is nice and flat. So at this point I can either go ahead and use a regular pair of scissors and just simply slip this down the edge or I can get the pinking shears out if you feel comfortable enough at this point that you'll do a, a nice neat job. And I can simply set my scissors in that fold and start cutting. Okay. 
the very first strip is cut and what I'm going to do from this point forward is take this original strip and lay it on top of the, the section of larger fabric right at the edge and then I can use it as a pattern to cut all of my subsequent strips. After cutting this initial strip, I've gone ahead and measured the entire length. And I come up with 86 inches. So that means that I need eight of these in order to make my entire length around the pillow. But uh, I'll go ahead and cut nine because um, I, I'm going to have to seam all of these together and I might take up a little bit more fabric than I think. So I'll just have that ninth one ready to go in case I need it. So at this point, all of the strips are cut out and I have my original circle that I cut out in the beginning and I can take this little piece of scrap at the end and I can cut one of these out which represents uh, the top of the pillow. We'll be cutting the bottom of the pillow later. And I take my regular scissors and just use this as a pattern and just go around and cut another At this circle. point, I'm ready to start working on fusing this, this interfacing to the pink cotton polyester fabric. So I've simply taken this as a pattern, laid it over the top of the, of the interfacing and cut out a circle. So I have my interfacing facing up uh, in the direction where the sticky side is up so that I could take the pink round, place it on top, line everything up, and then I've simply taken the other piece of the leftover fabric and dipped it in water and wrung it out because this is fusible only with some water. You could use the towel, you can use scrap fabric, anything you need. And then I have this really great iron that my iron is just a, a, a completely flat, flush plate. And that really helps when you're doing the interfacing. I've got it set on my cotton setting and I'm just going to hold it there for 10 seconds. So this is the interfacing side and then this is the finish side. And you'll see it's given it a really nice weight um, and really that's what you need as a base to start stitching all of your organza on top. So I'll take the, another finished fabric and I'm going to place it on top of the pink fabric and I will go ahead and baste everything along the edges all the way around. This organza happens to have a right side and a wrong side and so right now the right side side has a little sheen to it and I can flip it over in order to join these two strips together because unlike a regular seam where you put the right sides together to stitch we're going to be doing what we call a French seam. A French seam is a two-step seam and that finishes the seam on the right side and also the wrong side of the fabric. Uh, you could do it with a serger if you'd like but um, I don't have a serger so we're going to do it with a regular machine. Um, this this seam right here, you can't simply just join them together and stitch them. You need to take your sides, so this is the wrong side of the fabric, and you're going to flip this over so that the wrong sides of the fabric are facing one another, meaning this area in here, wrong side and wrong side. So these two go together and they get offset about an inch. So you'll see I have a little tail here and a little tail here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stitch this and then come back and show you how I stitch the other side. So now I have a stitch in the fabric and usually what you would do is you this intersection of fabric is where you'd run your stitching from one to the other if you were finishing this with a normal seam. But since this is a French seam we're going to take our scissors and we're going to trim this very close to that stitching. So it's about a sixteenth of an inch with our regular scissors. And then we'll take the fabric and we'll flip it over right sides together. Press that down and make another seam so that you're going to sandwich this little leftover seam on the inside. You're going to sandwich it into a little pocket 
so the seam is all finished and it's this is the back side that we're looking at and it's got this little extra piece of fabric here that we're going to eventually press down um, but I've gone ahead and tied off all of the ends of the threads and I'll flip it over to the right side and um, clip those threads off and move on to the next seam. All of the individual strips have been turned into one long length. So I have two ends to deal with and I've simply taken the pinking shears and trimmed off either end. So I can bring this over to the sewing machine and I can have my setting put on the base setting which on my machine is the highest setting which is a number four and what that'll do is when I run it along that entire long length um, it'll give me enough space in there so that I can manually pull the thread and start ruffling the fabric. The basting stitch is in place a quarter inch from the edge of the fabric on all of this ruffle fabric. Uh, so what I do is I go to the end of the fabric and I have two lengths of thread. I choose one and I start pulling it ever so gently uh, and just continue to move the fabric down that length of thread and, and start ruffling and you'll see already uh, I have some ruffling going on. Um, so at this point what you might want to do is take that length of string in the beginning that's already marked to the length that you need to cover the entire pillow lay it out in front of you on the floor. You might want to watch television or something while you're doing it because it will take you a little while to get this done. The ruffling done. is now complete. What I did was I started from the one end and I worked my way to the middle. And then I picked up the other end and I worked my way to the middle from that end. So that way when I got the ruffling complete, I was able to kind of fan it out toward the ends and get it to that exact length that I needed. Uh, and so don't think that, that my process would be any quicker than your process would be. It took me a little over an hour to get that done and make, make sure that all of the ruffling is nice and even over the entire In length. order to determine the very center of this circle piece of fabric, fabric, I've taken a tape measure and I've measured in one direction and then in the other to get the halfway point. And in my case it's six and three eighths inches. So I've put a little mark in the very middle and uh, I can also mark it with a pin. And the next thing to do is to um, determine what side of the fabric is the right side of the fabric on the ruffle. Uh, in my case this is the front face and the, this is the back face and I know that by locating all of the seaming that I did so that all the seaming will face on the back side. So with the front side facing up we'll take the very end and take another pin and pin that right on that spot in the very center of the circle fabric. The center is secured and what I'm going to be doing at this point is just rotating this fabric around the needle and securing all this ruffling into place. And as I go, what I'm going to be doing is taking this fabric and pushing it around and around a half an inch away from the previous ruffling here so that your quarter inch seam allowance lines up directly behind this previous ruffle. In order to maintain that circular direction around the pillow, uh, you, you can only work in one to one and a half inch increments as you go around um, because you'll need, when you come to a certain point, you're going to need to pull that fabric round over a little bit to stay on track. So as you near the end of running off your fabric round, uh, just go ahead and finish off that last little bit and then secure it by running your machine backwards. And that's it. So once you've gone ahead and clipped out all of your stray threads that might occur as a result of the ruffling, uh, you can go ahead and lay this down on top of your bottom fabric. So I have the pink fabric and then I'll take a marker and then I'm just going to simply trace around all of the edges of this fabric round 
so that I can get my pattern for the bottom part of the pillow. The bottom's all traced out. I've taken the organza fabric and I've done the same thing and made a pattern out of that. Uh, the reason why that I've waited until this point to cut out the bottom is because sometimes when you're doing this gathering um, and, so, and sewing it into place, it tends to shrink the fabric up on you. And in this case, for sure, it, it, it shrunk it up about a half an inch. So this is a half inch smaller than the original piece that I, I cut and so it's going to lay perfectly well right on there and I'm just going to baste it along the edges to secure the organza to the, the bottom fabric and then attach it to the As pillow. As I start to attach the bottom to the top uh, I put right sides together and I have all of this ruffling in between those two layers so what I need to do is take that ruffling and tuck it in underneath this bottom piece and pin the bottom piece in place tucking the ruffling in underneath as I go. So this is what you're going to wind up with. Uh, we've got it pinned all the way around the edges. Uh, I've got maybe a four inch opening at the top and I wind up with something that looks an awful lot like a whoopee cushion. Uh, so I'll go ahead and sew that edge to edge leaving the opening. The seam is all sewn all the way around and at this point before I flip this right side out I need to still address this seam. Uh, in order for this pillow to lay nice and straight and puffy when it's flipped right side out it, it, the seam needs to be clipped very close to the stitching or it needs to be clipped at one to one and a half inch increments all the way around to maintain that nice puffy look. So uh, because this is being made for a toddler, I'm choosing to do the clipping. Uh, and the reason why I'm doing the clipping is because it'll maintain more of that seam in place. And that'll, uh, that'll address any tugging or anything like that that a toddler might do to the pillow and not pull it apart. So I'll go ahead and clip those and, uh, and then flip it right side out. So here's the back side of the pillow. I've gone ahead and quickly pressed it before I stuff it uh, because it got a little wrinkled um, in pulling out all of the ruffling. So I'm just going to open this up and I'll start stuffing it and then I'll slip stitch the end. So I've used about two thirds of a small bag of fiber fill to fill the back side of the pillow. And uh, really this is more ruffle than it is fiber fill, so if you just keep that in mind as you're stuffing this, it doesn't need to be overstuffed. Uh, and then once I got that done, uh, I simply took a needle and thread and closed up that four, four inch opening. So uh, once that's done, I flip it over to the top and then I can visually inspect it from the side uh, and see if there are any pieces of this ruffle that are sticking up more than the others. And if I find something, which I have, I can just go ahead and take the pinking shears and trim it down to meet the rest of the pillow. And once that's done, you'll wind up with this beautifully full, gorgeous pillow that's going to last years and years even under the abuse of a toddler. Uh, so I hope this has given you some inspiration to go ahead and make a pillow like this for your home. And uh, until next time, this is Renee Romeo. I'll see you then.